Hi guys, welcome back. This week we're going to talk about time and time in respect of FPP. Now neither the Raspberry Pi Model 4 and earlier nor the BBB have real-time clocks on them. And what do I mean by a real-time clock? I mean a device that is going to maintain the date and time on the computer even when the power is switched off. Now in your bigger computers like the laptop here they have a battery on the motherboard and a chip called a real-time clock chip that sits there drawing power from the little battery when it's not powered up to maintain the date and time of the system. And then when the PC restarts, one of the first things it does is it talks to that clock chip and it gets the current date and time so it knows where it is. Now, because neither the Pi 4 and earlier or the BBB have such a chip, they can't do that natively. So how does it work when we go into FPP and we say that we want our show to start at a particular date and time? How does it do it? How does it work out when to go? Now in the majority of instances, it uses a thing called NTP or Network Time Protocol. And that is it connects to your network and one of the packets that it receives when it's first connecting to your network via a thing called DHCP, which is how it gets its IP address and stuff. One of the bits of information there in there is where to get a network time from. So the Pi or the BBB will connect to the network and it will then request the time from the nearest network time server. Once it's got that happy days, it can update itself and off it goes. It knows when to start your show. And that's all really well and good until you want to run a show without a wired or wireless network connection to the outside world, to the internet, where the network time servers exist. How do we then tell the Pi or BBB what the time is? And how do they maintain it without, if we're going to turn them off and on again, which we often do? Well, the simple things are, quite often, your show player will have a controller like this uh, Culp Lights one for a Raspberry Pi. This has on it a real-time clock chip as part of the hat. And we can tell that because it's got a little battery socket on the side here for a CR1220 battery. So this hat will maintain the date and time for us. And when the Pi boots, we can go down the settings, the, in the time settings of FPP, we can down, go in there and say what sort of clock chip this hat has on it, and then when the Pi boots it will talk to the clock chip, and away we go. The same is true on some of the smaller hats, this Hanson 28D Plus for example. If I look on the back of it, there's a battery socket, and it's got a network time chip in there as well. So this little RTC hat will do the job. But we're not always running hats or capes on our Pis and BBBs that are out there. Sometimes we might just have a Raspberry Pi as a show player and it's expected to do the work. So how do we get round the problem then? Well, the simplest solution is you can buy a small real-time clock hat. Uh, this one is actually for an Arduino, but it's a very similar thing, just a tiny little hat that will sit onto the GPIO pins and will feed the information into the Pi. 
Now, if you're running a Raspberry Pi 5, we've got good news. For the first time ever, Raspberry Pi have integrated a real-time clock chip onto the main Raspberry Pi itself. We have down at the bottom here a couple of tiny little sockets and one of these is a battery input to keep the real-time clock running. So all we need to do is to buy a little battery like this one with the right little connector on the end of it and we can plug that directly onto the Pi and the Pi will keep time quite happily. But all of these hats and capes with the Pi require us to enter the date and time manually. There's no way of automatically identifying what the date and time is and setting it onto the board. But to be fair, most of the time that's not an issue. As long as it's within 30 seconds or so, then who's counting? But sometimes you might have a prestigious show that you really need to go right on the mark. And how are you going to get a network time solution to that? Because you're going to need some sort of external input. Now, if you haven't got Wi-Fi and you haven't got wired internet available, then one option you could look at is something like this Adafruit GPS hat for Raspberry Pi. Now this is one I actually used on a project a few years ago and I suddenly thought about it whilst I was putting my notes together for this video. Now why would a GPS hat be useful? Well, GPS itself is fundamentally based on time. To calculate your location anywhere in the world from GPS, it's done by calculating the amount of time that a signal takes to get to you from at least four different satellites. The GPS chip will receive the time from the satellites and the satellites are all running very, very precise clock chips in them so they're all sending their data packets at exactly the same time and the GPS chip looks at the data coming in, works out the very tiny time differences between the data arriving and from that it can calculate where you are. But in doing that it is receiving a time signal from the GPS satellites and we can use that time signal to set the date and time on our Pi. So it's been a few years since I used this, so I, have, I went online and I found a few blog posts um, from Adafruit themselves and from other people on how to get this set up. And most of them were out of date. The version of Linux used as the operating system had changed and the methodology of some of the communication stuff had changed in the background. But eventually I found the right one um, and I'll stick a link to it in the comments below. So I set about a fresh install of FPP onto a Pi 4, put the hat on and got the configuration all in and working, or I thought it was right, but I couldn't get it to work. It was the Pi was sat next to my desk on a windowsill, so it had a view of the sky, or so I thought. But the Crony software that actually takes the date and time from the GPS chip and puts it into the operating system would not behave. So I wiped the Pi, I redid it all again, still couldn't make it work ran through my notes, I ran through the notes on the software, and I could see there was data coming in. I could see the entries in coming in through the serial bus showing the data that was coming in, but Crony would not update. It just said nothing there. So I got the hump, and 
I put the pie outside. I've stuck it outside on the bird feeder in the back garden. Got some power to it, plonked it there, powered FPP back up, logged in, nothing. It would not talk. I could see data coming in from the satellites. Crony wouldn't work. So I'm really getting the ache now. I left it and I went for a walk. And that was the best thing I could have done. Because what I didn't realise is it takes a period of time, and we're talking 15, 20 minutes sometimes, for enough data to come into this from multiple satellites for it to get the time signal, the fluctuations in the time signal, down to a small enough margin that Crony will then accept them and will behave. So as soon as I got back from my walk, I came in, had a cup, made a cup of tea. You've always got to have a cup of tea. And looked at the cron job that was still running, looked at the um, putty session that I'd still got SSH'd into my pie, and it was working. It had all come up beautifully. And the errors were down to about 11 milliseconds. So this little board by itself with no network connectivity whatsoever had set the date and time to within 11 thousandth of a second to the actual universal time. Now why is that important? Well, it's not really, it's, it's overkill. It's because we can. But I just wanted to go through and say, look, just because you've got your pie or BBB in the front yard and it's too far away to get an internet connection for, on your Wi-Fi from your house, don't stress, there are ways around it. So if you're running a controller like this, you can set up a real-time clock on it because it's there. Even the little Hanson hat has got a real-time clock on it. And if all else fails, you can jump on Amazon or other vendors are available and a little Raspberry Pi hat can be had for not very many dollars or pounds. If you want to be really precise, an Adafruit, I think it's called an Ultimate GPS hat, will run and it will bring your network time in beautifully over GPS and your Pi will be within thousandths of a second of network time. Now the important thing here also is that it is only your master or your main player that has to have accurate time for this to work. If you have multiple instances of FPP out there, or you have falcons or baldricks or culps out and about, doesn't matter what the time is on Lowe's because the only one it matters on is the main player. Because the main player is the one that will be sending the data out whether it be E131 or DDP or sync packets to another FPP instance, the devices at the other end don't care. They're just gonna receive the data and get on with it, regardless of whatever the date and time is. So there we go, as a little insight into time. Normally, you're fine. You're FPP instance is hardwired or wired over Wi-Fi to your home network and it can get a network time source from there. If you're running a Pi 5, you just need to get a battery for it and you're good to go. You can put the date and time in manually and it will then remember it. If you're running an earlier Pi or a BBB with a hat or cape, have a look and see if it's got a battery socket on it. If it does, 99% chance that's for a real-time clock and Bob's your uncle, away you go. Once again, 
set the date and time manually, and it will then remember until such time as the battery goes flat. And if you want a foolproof plan, you can go for a GPS hat, but it needs to have a good view of the sky. This one has actually got a, a little socket, I think it's called a UFL socket for an external antenna as well. So even if you can't get one immediately outside, although you shouldn't have a problem because if your show's outside in the middle of the yard, then it's outside. Um, this will bring you down to very precise timings. And if you're not sure what a light show looks like where you've got a thousand different controllers all scheduled to go at the same time, running from an NTP source, all programmed to start at X time, here's a quick link. So there you go, over a thousand cars there running an x light sequence and they were all individually set to go at the same time. So there's no network, connect connect no network connectivity between them, they're all just programmed to go at the same time. The cars have a network time source and bingo, off they go. So I hope you found that one useful. And um, as always, do like, share, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. If you've got a product or service you'd like me to have a look at, reach out, contact details are below. And if not, have a good one, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.